So we kick off today's coverage in grand rock and roll style, which I'm, I'm really happy to kick it off with. I'm joined by Mitch Albom, and the, the, his new novel is The Magic Strings of Frankie Presto. Welcome to you. Nice to have you. This is a fictional character set amid some very real times, real musicians. Yeah. How'd you come to this? Well, I was a musician for many years before I was a writer, and that was always my first love, and then I stopped thinking about it or writing about it once I became a writer, but I think it was always latent there. And uh, I wanted to write a book about how talents affect one another in this world, and so I came up with the concept of... How talents affect one another? Yes, how our individual talents affect yeah. other people. So I came up with this concept of uh, the greatest guitar player to ever walk the earth, and he's so good that he actually ends up, uh, when he's nine years old, with a guitar that has six magic strings that over the course of his lifetime he can actually change people's lives with his playing and each time he does that one of the strings turns blue and mm -hmm. sort of dissipates and disappears and you sort of follow him throughout the course of the 20th century uh, the entire musical landscape of the 20th century yeah. as he weaves through all of that. You, di you didn't just want to create a guitarist, you want to create the greatest of all time. Well, if you're going to go for a book, you know, <laughs> make it. It's actually even grander than that. I mean, the, the book itself is narrated by the voice of music. Right. So music's the narrator. Yeah, and I wanted so, to ask you about that. Yeah, well, how, right how, from the get-go, that's pretty, I don't know, either grand or haughty, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. But it's it. it as someone who adores music, it gives you the opportunity to write from the inside out. Instead of writing about how much uh, the character loves music, you write about how much music loves being inside human beings. And it explains at the very beginning of the book that when you come into the world, when you're born, before your eyes even open, you can actually see. And what you see is a wall of brilliant colors. Mm -hmm. And each of those represent a talent in the human spectrum. And when you clench your fist for the first time as an infant, you're actually grabbing the talents that most appeal to you. And those are the talents that are sort of meant to be for you. And Frankie Presto grabs two big fistfuls of music. You mm -hmm. know, that's all he takes, right. more than anyone ever. Yeah. And thus he becomes sort of music's favorite child and he follows him throughout the course of his life. Was it interesting, fun, or what, 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 what how do you characterize to write in the voice of music? It was great. I am music, right? Yeah. So let me tell you the history of rock and roll. There, there, there's actually a, yeah. a line, I am music and I'm here for the soul of Frankie Presto. Right. And it, music also says all humans are musical, why else would the Lord give you a beating heart? Mm -hmm. And so being able to write sentences like that and being able to express, for example, there's a time where music talks about money and it doesn't understand, like, what's this money thing with you humans? You know, so many of you, I've lost so many of you to, to money. It means nothing to me. You know, you should be thrilled to practice me. Another time it, it scolds uh, the reader or the musicians for trying to think that they can find more music at the bottom of a bottle or the end of a needle, you right. know, for the, right. those who think that being addicted makes you a better mu musician. So it, it was great fun, and it also gave me historical... Uh, vantage point to write about this character. And then, uh, and I, I'm thinking of your journalistic hat, you brought in real musicians to comment on the fictional Frankie Preston. Yeah, uh, the music attends the funeral. It's, it starts at the beginning of uh, where he's, he's being uh, buried and all these mourners come to honor this mm -hmm. amazing mystical musician who, you know, kind of disappeared for a long period of his time, of his life. So I contacted a bunch of musicians who I've been lucky enough to make friends with over the years from Burt Bacharach, Tony Bennett, to Wynton Marsalis, to Lyle Lovett, Ingrid Michelson, Paul Stanley from KISS. And I wrote a bunch of episodes in their voices with their permission. Yeah. I said, I want to make up these times where you were in his band, or you met him, or you helped him, or you, you whatever. You told them. You gave. You filled in the backstory of Frankie yeah. Presto and their involvement yeah. with him. And yeah. sent them the story, make sure yeah. they were okay with it. And to a, I mean, they were, not only were they okay with it, they were so happy to be in a book, because I have this theory that musicians don't want to be writers, writers don't want to be musicians. So they were very happy to be in the book, and, and many of them recorded the audio for the audio book, and then they helped make a soundtrack, which I think is the first time there's ever been a soundtrack for a, for a novel before it became a movie or anything like that. So yeah, they were great. This is a band you have to get together, right? Them and Frankie That Christian. would be a hell of a band, yeah. <laughs> Did this combine, so this, this does, is a kind of combining of loves for you. It is. I mean, you know, I've always not only been a musician, but a music fan. Mm -hmm. And obviously my writing, and you know, I, I try in my books to sort of have a, a point, you know, a larger maybe life lesson or something that you can take away from the book. And being able to do this 
it was almost historical. It was sort of historical fiction meets magical realism because yeah. Frankie Presto is totally fake. He's he's he's, to he's like Forrest Gump. You know, he's everywhere. But he comes over to America. I mean, he's born in a burning church in Spain during the Civil War. His mother dies the night he's born. She breathes a song into his ear, and then he's got this song in his inside him forever. He comes to America when he's nine years old with Django Reinhardt translating for him. He yeah. ends up in Duke Ellington's band. Right. He sells a car to Hank Williams. He's in a studio with a guy named Richard Pennyman who can't find his sound and he says to him, well, how about that Tutti Frutti song you were playing? <laughs> well, that was good and next thing you know, little Richard is born. Right. He's in Elvis Presley's band as a guitar player and Elvis can't make it one night and he steps out and becomes like the world's first Elvis impersonator. So I'm able to weave him through all this, all this real stuff. He's at Woodstock and everything. But I'm also able to say what I wanted to say about mm -hmm how everybody sort of has a talent that they're meant to embrace. He wanders off from his for a while when he gets sort of uh, enraptured with being a, a singer and a pop star, and then he loses his sight of his guitar, which is his real talent. All of this history, did you, was it research? That Absolutely. Was it? You did, yeah. Down to the color of Hank Williams' car, really? down to, the, uh, how many, down to a, a, a shoeshine stand outside Little Richard's recording studio, yeah. or how many people were at a concert Elvis Presley did in Vancouver, Canada. So everything is accurate musically, except there's this Zelig character that like is in all these scenes. So um, it was fun, and as you say, you know, I'm, I'm trained as a journalist, so that's not new to me to right. do that kind of research. Right. right. The, 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 what you're referring to is the talent that everybody is meant to have. Right. Tell me, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I think we live in a country where we're sort of. Um, almost instructed as to what the good talents are. You know, if you have a singing voice and you can win a competition on yeah. TV, good talent. You know, if you can invent a, uh, a microchip and, and start a startup company, make a billion dollars when you're 25, good talent. If yeah. you can dunk a basketball or throw a football, good talent. But all the other things, you know, are, they're like, well, eh, too bad you got stuck with that one. That's not true. Everybody's got a particular gift. Mm -hmm. If your gift is nursing and you can influence people with that, you know, you, you're going to save lives if your gift is teaching. I'm a walking example. I mean, I'm probably only sitting here with you because I had a teacher, you know, a long time ago, Maury Schwartz, who right. had a profound influence on me, and I wrote a book to pay his medical bills, and it became Tuesdays with Maury, and yeah. he's now teaching still all over the world. I mean, it's in, in, in 45 different languages. Yeah. So if you embrace the talent that sort of feels right for you and is natural, that one that you kind of grabbed when you came out of the womb, yeah. um, you can affect one person and you can affect the world. That book obviously changed your life yeah. in, in many ways. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm looking now at all of the, the books, the journalism, the music, the philanthropy that you do. It's a kind of, um, I don't know, empire. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know how you look at it, but you could not have imagined all this. No, I look at it less as an empire than as an outgrowth. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I took a very sharp right turn after Tuesdays with Maury. I was a sports writer through and through, that's all I ever really wanted to do during that time. And, and then uh, I wrote this book, that was supposed to pay his medical bills. They, yeah. they printed 20,000 copies, thought they'd be lucky if they sold those. And, and today I believe it's the best selling memoir of all time. And with it comes it's a amazing. lot of responsibility yeah. because I meet a lot of people who are suffering or are dying and I've heard a lot of those stories. And so that kind of became my interest. You mentioned my philanthropy, one of the reasons that Frankie is an orphan in this book is because I spend a lot of time with orphans. I have an orphanage in Haiti that I operate, and I'm yeah. there every single month. And so I learned a lot about how you can influence a kid's talent and a kid's path simply by stepping into their lives. And yeah. Frankie is raised by like a, a thousand different people in his musical life, and at the end of the book he says he realized how many people it takes in this world to raise one child. And I see that all the time. When you I'm see it in your own life. I mean, yeah. you, you can see a kind of clear line, even if it sometimes looks like a magical realism yeah. line. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I think that tends to be the best fiction when you can, you know, it rings true because you've seen it yourself and you've lived it yourself, but the characters are make believe. Let me ask you one more thing, because this is a book that actually comes with its own soundtrack, with a soundtrack. Yeah, right? weird. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Fun. Oh my gosh, I mean, I wrote songs, I wrote about songs, the way a writer writes about songs. I gave him a name, I gave him some lyrics, and said it was a big hit in 1960. And then artists like Matt Kearney and Ingrid Michaelson and Sawyer Fredericks and John Pizzarelli and, and people like that, they took these songs 
and they created real songs that sound like they were from that time, and then they recorded them, so they were sort of effectively remaking songs that never existed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that paradigm has ever actually happened, and you can get the soundtrack to the magic strings of Frankie Presto, and it parallels along with the story of the book. You got a lot out of this, didn't you? A great story, I, a novel, and, and you know, some new music. 35 years after I gave up music as a career, I, I finally have a bit of a record. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's been great fun coming right. full circle on that. All right, the book is The Magic Strings of Frankie Presto. Mitch Alden, thanks so much. My pleasure, thanks.